You know, it's amazing working on a brand like this because you see so many different types of people and each one of them loves different parts of the franchise, like between the new Paramount movies or you've got um, all the great cartoon series like Transformers Animated or Prime throughout the years. And every every time you come to a convention like this, like you, you meet more and more people that appreciate different parts about the Transformers franchise. It's just so cool to work on. I think another way that we also put a unique spin on it, especially with our new Titan Master system, is I guess enhancing the figures through play and maybe adding play experiences that weren't there in the original figure. So, not, if you, so yeah, so now we have the new Titan Master figures. So for the vehicle modes, we can actually have little figures sitting inside the cockpits. Uh, we can put them in gunner positions. Uh, we have our new uh, just announced Nah Sharpticon figure that can actually chop down on a Titan Master. So um, for us, it's quite fun as well is, is enhancing our play experience. We don't necessarily ever want to make an exact replica of what, what we've done in the past because we're always trying to progress the brand forward. Uh, but you're also trying to really drill into what the key elements of those characters are. So if you take a character like Optimus Prime, there's so much emotional cachet connected with a character like that that you want to make sure you identify what those key attributes are and you drill into it. But you're also um, giving yourself enough leeway to do something that is unexpected with those characters. like. Uh, Soundwave's a good example. So he's, he, in his essence, he's, he's a music player, but we wanted to make him into sort of like a Bluetooth media player type of thing. But we kept the idea of uh, his chest opening up, and we can, you can fit Legends class guys inside of there. So it's about retaining those core elements, but also kind of pushing things forward. It's an exciting place to be in Transformers. Well, we do know that some fans really like that complex transformation. I think probably one of the more complicated ones I've seen uh, lately is the is the all new Megatron figure that we just revealed. Um, this is a triple changing Megatron. He has the ability to change into a tank or uh, a jet. Uh, it's an intricate, sort of sophisticated transformation. What's cool is though, I think some fans really love that that level of complexity. But a lot of our mainline characters, like your Chrome Dome, Highbrow. Uh, hardhead, these characters, the Skull, Skull Smasher, they're they're fun to transform, and I, we're finding that like a lot or a lot of parents can do them with their kids and kind of pass down that that fun of Transformers the next generation. Um, and then like the, the guys you're working on, the the, the Legends class and Titan Masters, they've they've got a different level of complexity too. But I think in order, to, I think probably that Megatron is the trickiest one. From when I was a kid, Six Shot was probably the most complicated one. It was super, it was actually advertised as how many can you figure out? <laughs> it was like the TV commercial. It's true. <laughs> uh, growing up in the 90s, I love the uh, uh, classic uh, Cheetor with uh, uh, rockets on the side. You know, how can you make a, a cheetah better? You add rockets, for sure. It's, good. it's a fair point. <laughs> uh, I, I've always liked Whirl and Roadbuster. You know, I think they're, they were cool. They never really appeared in the cartoon show, but their toys really had like a, a different aesthetic to them. And I remember as a kid, drawn pictures of them and just fascinated with, with their vehicle forms and robot forms. They felt like they were part of a unique uniform, universe. So yeah, Whirl and Roadbuster, my favorites. Great. Pretty, Thank you so that's, much. that's a pretty dorky choice, right? <laughs>